states that uh, he was the director of the Urban Crisis Center, the UCC, as a race relations, human relations institute in Atlanta. A claim by clients such as U.S. Steel, Inland Steel, and the Federal Express. The Federal Express was founded by a member of the Skull and Bones, who laid nude in a coffin and was born again into a satanic order. Yeah, he's a white guy. And then he talks about uh, involving himself with federal government agencies. Now, if Khalid Muhammad is not picking up his check from the CIA, he's missing the payday. Because he's doing the job. And he talks about uh, this urban crisis center being involved with IBM, Xerox, and AT, AT&T. This is the big three of the American Illuminati. And what do they want to do? They want to bring about an insurrection in this country. Not to benefit you, not to free you, but to enslave you. And I take a look at this. The black man, it says, the white man's worst nightmare. I think Khalid Muhammad is the black man's worst nightmare. Now I'm taking a look at the uh, the client list over here, and yes, they are from the from the Brotherhood of Death. And I would hope that his relationship with them is by ignorance, rather than deliberate intent. The UCC is uh, Khalid's bioreflex is in bed with the Illuminati Fortune 500. And if you don't think it's true, ask him. He'll tell you. Can we get a response now? I'll get a response to you. Right, his, his sign will come up here in just a moment. Here. Uh, I'm going over here to uh, some information. The Ford Foundation granted one million four hundred and forty four thousand seven hundred and still another five hundred and ninety seven thousand to communist china and to the population control group so they would like to control you they would like to kill you they would like to incarcerate you and i'm taking a look at this uh, convention and yeah the convention was put together uh it says women's rights the week's global conference is officially about population they want to reduce your population. They want to reduce the population of the planet by 1,250,000,000 people. And uh, he has been a supporter of Mandela. You think that Mandela really represents the, all of the people of South Africa. Now here he is uh, with the African National Congress. He's a white guy supporting the Southern, Southern African Communist Party. And he supports Winnie Mandela. Now, now, Winnie Mandela, and I can show you some films, said, we shall free South Africa with our necklaces. That's right. That's right. That's and they would take tires, and they would put them around young human beings. I saw one 17-year-old girl, black girl, lit on fire alive and he says that's right okay that's he says that's right he thinks that's a good idea I don't think that it's right to take a young black woman and douse her with gasoline and light her on fire alive he says who cares what I think See, I believe in freedom and that everyone has a right to choose, to integrate, to segregate, to separate, and I believe in a free world alliance. And I'm taking a look here at um, this particular movement that the Ford Foundation has been supportive of. And 
there's, a, there's an individual, I think uh, he wrote a, a play called The Toilet. You may know him, Leroy Jones. He offered a play, yeah, about a degenerate white man who molested blacks in the men's room. White people were described as, uh, as loons, devils, beasts, and lions. Now the people who funded Leroy Jones were from the Ford Foundation. And they were looking to do something. to create an attitude that would drive people out into the streets. I believe Khalid Muhammad is being used by the Council on Foreign Relations. And I believe that all of the ridiculous, rabble-rousing, racist rhetoric is not going to bring America freedom, but rather drive us under the auspices of a global government. And I would hope that someday in the near future, you're going to be able to look out and see beyond your sight and hear beyond your ears and take a look at the, the information that's coming about. I take a look at the, what happened over here in Oklahoma. We're talking about uh, the bombing of the building. You understand what I'm talking about, right? This was done not by Lee Harvey McVeigh, but by agents of the federal government to pass, to pass the Anti-Bill of Rights Bill, the Anti-Terrorist Bill, to transfer power from the people to the president and the police. Now this is exactly what Adolf Hitler did on February 27, 1933. His agents burnt down the Reichstag and I believe that agents of this federal government bombed the Oklahoma building to transfer this power from the people to the president and the police. You say, well, you know that. You can't have an asymmetrical conclusion from ammonium nitrate charge that dissipates its intensity from the epicenter of the blast. In other words, you can't have one column remaining closer to the epicenter and another column which is beyond it going down. It's impossible. I've done a tape called Reichstag 95, and this is with Ted Gunderson. He's the former head of the FBI in Los Angeles, Dallas, and Memphis. He says the FBI is dirty, and they did it. I just got a picture in the mail the other day, which validates what I'm saying. This is taken from the, from the air. There were some good old boys down there in the south, and they were out pheasant hunting. And they saw this 10-foot fence go up in this army base. This is sort of half, the base that's half closed. This is about, oh, two hours or so from Oklahoma City. It shows four concert hunts, five tents, four Humvees, and some yellow, brownish material over on the ground next to two cylinders. And here's the same picture on the other side. In the center, you'll see a yellow rider truck. This to me is validation. By the way, this was taken in early April 1995. The facility went up in late November 1994. It closed down the day after the bombing. Now, if your government, this government, yes, not my government, but the government that we are being ruled by would murder 169 people they would stop at nothing. And I'm saying it is the same government that intends to enslave you. Uh, oh. There are five minutes left in this round. All right, thank you.
This is validation. When we talked to the, uh, the colonel at the Army base, he said, we've never had a rider truck out there. So what am I tell telling you about Khalid for here? I'm saying that the Ford Foundation finances revolutionaries. They finance people that would seemingly oppose everything that they stand for. They have financed Khalid. And there is a reason. You have proof. Yeah, I've got proof. Did you receive uh, any monies from the Ford Foundation? Yes, I did. Is that true? Do you believe him? I believe him. I believe him. There's no question about that. The Ford Foundation is the major funding foundation of revolutionaries in the United States of America. They are part and parcel of the Illuminati. Oh, and so far as Osiris is concerned, I think uh, Khalid is making, uh, making a reference to the statement of the eye on the back of the dollar bill. Catholic Church for years called it the eye of Lucifer. If you take a look at the pyramid, you'll, uh, you'll see this. On the back of the dollar bill, it says Anuit Coeptus Novus Ordo Seclorum, the new world odor. I say odor because if you cannot see it, if you cannot hear it, you can certainly smell it. It has the stench of death and betrayal. At the bottom it says 1776. This is the creation of the order and sect of the Illuminati. It's not black men in control of this country. It's white men. Evil white men. But that does not make all white men evil. There is a small, small group of these people controlling our currency, our commerce, our health. They don't want you healthy. They want you sick. They don't want you alive. They want you dead. They don't want you free. They want you enslaved. And their symbols are going up all across the country, all across the world. Here is the Illuminati Luxor. The Catholic Church called the eye, the eye of Horus, the Illuminati eye. Now, as you know, Khalid uh, has had a fallout. He's had a fallout with Farrakhan. I did not create... Yeah, I didn't create the division. I like to speak. Well, listen, I did not create the division. He dug that division with his mouth. Khalid has been to Mecca six times. But never once has he discovered what Malcolm X has discovered. And that is that people of various races can belong to one religion. And this isn't a matter of religion with him, it's a matter of race. And not in saying that all white men are the devils or all white men are the enemy yeah. is not only absurd, it's insane. Oh, yeah. This man should be on the Jerry Springer show yeah. where he belongs. Yeah. And after the assassination... One more minute. Yeah, one more. Right, after the assassination of Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King, this government passed a bill calling for the disarmament of America. It, it is identical in nature, almost word for word, with the legislation, the legislation passed by Adolf Hitler. 
But that was in 1968. Ronald Reagan was not president of the United States then. So I'm asking for that revelation. And I'm asking that uh, you discover what this man is, because I believe he is an embarrassment to the nation of Islam. And uh, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Khalid. Yes. Okay. Welcome back to the podium, Khalid. First of all, let us begin with Malcolm X, my spiritual big brother and the first great national spokesman of the black movement and the nation of Islam, and following him, my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and by God's grace and by God's permission, and with nothing to do with Anthony Hilda, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan chose me to be third in that line behind him and Malcolm. Yes, it is true, I have been to Mecca all of those times, and it is also true I did not find what Malcolm found. I have been seven times, and I found racism among the white Arabs in Mecca so thick until you could cut it with a damn knife. I found ghettos in Mecca. I found that no matter where I went in the world, I found that no matter what the social, political, religious, economic, academic system was, it made no difference. Wherever the black-white dynamic existed, you'll find the white on top, the black on the bottom. I've been to capitalist countries as we are victims of white capitalism. And wherever the black-white dynamic exists, you find the white capitalists on top and the black capitalists on the bottom. If it's a socialist country, you find the white socialists on top and the black socialists on the bottom. If it's a communist country, you find the white communists on top and the black communists on the bottom. If it's a Christian country, you find the white Christian on top and the black Christian on the bottom. If it's a so-called Jew country, you find the white Jew on top and the black Jew on the bottom. Yes, I've been to Mecca, and where the black-white dynamic exists, you find you find a white Muslim on top, and God damn it, you find a black Muslim on the bottom. It makes no difference what the system is. Wherever the black-white dynamic exists, you find the black on the bottom and the white on top. Some of you say it's a class system. If it's a class system, then you'll find the white man as the upper class, and you'll find the black man and woman as the lower class. No, I didn't find what my spiritual big brother Malcolm found in Mecca. I found racism in Mecca, and I've found it everywhere. I've gone throughout the face of the planet Earth, 196,940,000 square miles. I found it everywhere I went. Now, listen to this damn fool. <laughs> Talk about the Ford Foundation. Yeah. You read yourself, cracker. I was going to school. A young boy considered what was called an accelerated student, a gifted student, from preschool all the way up through elementary. They clocked us, pulled us together, about 29 of us kept us together. We keep up with each other to this very day, and none of them are on the pay payroll of the uh, crackers of the New World Order, the Trilateral Commission. None of them are on the payroll of the Rockefeller Foundation. None of them are on the payroll of the Ford Foundation. We all keep up with each other today. They didn't mix anybody with us. These were black elders over us. We were their pride and joy. And so based on our test scores and based on our performance, Harvard, Yale, and Columbia. I ain't had nothing to do with no skull and crossbone fool. <laughs> That's your thing, getting naked and laying down in caskets and stuff. That ain't my thing. Been in no damn casket naked. What the hell I look like in a casket naked? 
of your damn mind. This record should be on Comic View. With Miss Laura or somebody. They're in a casket naked. <laughs> He's probably looking at this handsome, bald-headed black man wishing he could get in a casket with me. <laughs> no, <Nah>, cracker. <laughs> he says I support Mandela, that lets you know how dumb the cracker is. November 29, 1993, King College. That's one of the main things that rocked and shook the foundation of the world. I said that I did not support Mandela. I said I don't agree with Mandela. I said I believe that Mandela is one of the weakest ever to be in any leadership position over black people. But the cracker's a dumb cracker. A dumb devil knows no better. I said that day that if we were going to give white folks after they have murdered our black men, women, children, and babies, and the Oppenheimers, and the De Beers, and others have robbed our diamond mines. We can't even wear a watch, or a ring, or sisters, a necklace, or a bracelet. We call it jewelry, but it's really Jew El Reed. Jew El Reed as they steal all over. That's why they call Rubenstein and Goldstein and Silverstein, because they steal in gold and silver and rubies all over the earth for Mandela to have a truth commission and give them executive clemency and pardon before they even go to court. He could forgive F.W. de Klerk. He could forgive John Buster. He could forgive the no good dirty bastards of South Africa, but he couldn't forgive Winnie Mandela, who stayed with him for 27 long years. What more does a black woman have to do? What more does a black woman have to do? It was Winnie Mandela, a true revolutionary. He tried to attack Assar. He tries to attack the pyramids. He attempts to uh, detract from us and attack our great accomplishments as we gave civilization to the world and all of the sciences and disciplines to the world. And now he attacks our heroes and our sheroes and comes right up in our face and disrespects us. I said, if we're going to be merciful, we give them 24 hours in South Africa to get out of town by sundown. I said, if they don't get out of town, we kill the men, we kill the women, we kill the children, we kill the babies, we kill the blind, we kill the cripple, we kill the crazy, we kill the faggots, we kill the lesbians. I said, God damn it, we kill them all. He said, well, why kill them all? Why kill the women? First, why kill the babies? They're just little innocent blue-eyed babies. Because, God damn it, they're going to grow up one day to rule your babies. Kill them now. Why kill the women in South Africa? I said kill the women because the women are the military manufacturing center. And every nine months they lay down on their backs and reinforcement rolls out from between their legs. So shut down the military manufacturing center by killing the white woman. Why kill the elder crackers? The old crepit crackers in South Africa. How in the hell you think they got old? They got old oppressing and killing black people. Yes, sir. I said, kill a cripple, kill a hell far, kill a hog, God love it. Kill them all. Kill a faggot, kill a lesbian. And after you kill them all, I said that day about Mandela to let you know what he really knows about me, don't know a damn thing. I said, then you go to the goddamn grave and dig them up and kill them a goddamn gang because they didn't die hard enough. And if you don't have the strength to dig them up after you've done all that work, just go to the grave and shoot in the damn grave. Kill them again because they didn't die hard enough. I don't have no respect for Mandela. 
The so-called Jews had their Nuremberg trial. They tried Nazi war criminals for war crimes. Where are our Johannesburg tribes? If they had Nuremberg, where are our Johannesburg tribes? Where we try war criminals and give them justice. Justice, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, is the reward for good and the punishment for evil. Let me see what else this no good cracker said. <laughs> I got his notes here. Damn fool. Hey, I'm going off to school to Harvard, Yale, and Columbia. They're financing me for revolution. I wish they'd give me some guns. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I have proven to you beyond any reasonable shadow of doubt. The evidence has shown and let the evidence speak for itself that Anthony Hilda is indeed not a devil, but the devil. The white man is not a devil, but the devil, and his history is written in blood. It's a grafted devil, skunk of the planet Earth. I love Winnie Mandela for putting rubber tires with gasoline and setting them on fire around the necks of snitches, stew pigeons, agents, rats, and provocateurs. And I say to the wife of Anthony Hilda, girl, you better get you a necklace. Girl, you better get you a tire. Girl, you better get you some gasoline and catch this crack asleep and put it around his neck and set him on fire. the Quran says and when the Lord said to the angels I'm going to place a ruler in the earth they said what would you place in the earth but that which would cause mischief and the shedding of blood another scripture of the Holy Quran in the Holy Quran 20 and 102 says on the day when the trumpet is blown we will gather the guilty blue eyed together and the Holy Quran says on the day when the matter is decided Satan will say, I had no authority over you. I just called you, and you came. So blame me not, but blame yourself. And so now the devil comes to you and calls you. You mean you going to go? And then the devil will wash his hand when the wrath of God comes down. And he will say, as the Holy Quran says, I had no authority over you. I just called, and you came. So blame me not, but blame yourself. The Bible, in laying it all out for us, tells us that the beast would have eyes before and behind. He'd have a grasp of history and would be able to look down the wheel of time. Ephesians says that we work against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He already told you the crackers are in high places. They are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now let me read a little bit for you from the book of Revelations. I've got to cover these things In the 17th chapter of the book of Revelations, it says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And so he carried me away in the midst in the spirit, in the darkness, and out into the wilderness, it really says. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head, 
where the name was the name written Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. 17th chapter of Revelation, 18th chapter. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. She has become the habitation of devils, the hole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Another scripture says, come out of her, my people. Come out of her. For her sins have reached unto heaven. He says, come out of her. God is talking to his people. He said, my people and my is the divine possessive pronoun. In this case, come out of her, my people, that ye be not receivers in her plagues and that you be not partakers in her sins. And it tells you how these cities of this mystery Babylon, which is America herself, would be burned, absolutely and utterly burned. You can't save it, Anthony. The hand of God, the judgment of God has entered into the gates of America already. The death angels have entered in already and they didn't get no grant from a Ford Foundation. They came straight from God himself. There is no way to save America. He keeps appealing to you as though you are an American trying to trick you. And if you go for that, I tell you the way Malcolm told you. You've been hoodwinked. You've been had, you've been took, you've been bamboozled. If you let this cracker tell you that you are an American and that you should join with him to save America, I live according to the title of that great and illuminating book of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad called The Fall of America. I want to see America fall. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said for the wickedness and the evil of the white man, the devil himself, he says America would burn for 310 years and take 690 to cool off. He said a handful of devils would make it out of the first judgment, a remnant of them, and would make it into Europe. If you do right, Anthony, maybe you can make it out of the first judgment and escape into Europe as a God's judgment will strike America first. Maybe if you stop lying, you could get an extension of time, but ultimately God's wrath and judgment would reach Europe also. And you would be destroyed in Europe after a period of time. But at least you could get a stay of God's judgment and an extension of time if your nature will allow you to straighten up and stop lying so much. But a devil must lie. That's the end of the 20 minutes. Wow, they came fast. We got 15 more. I got 15 more minutes on you, cracker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great debate. Yes, At this time, we are going to allow for questions. Closing, sorry, closing remark. Hold your question from the debaters. Beginning with Anthony Hill. Well, Dr. Henry Kissinger said in Evangelos Bonds, France, 1991, he said, Today America would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. He went on to say that tomorrow they will be grateful, and this is especially true if they were told that there was a threat from beyond. Brothers and sisters, hold your seats and just wait for a few minutes. Whether real or promulgated. And he was talking about a threat from beyond from outer space, whether real or promulgated. And July 5th of last year, they released July 4th. Independence Day. They're not talking about independence, but interdependence. 
And he went on to say, it is then that all peoples of the world will flee to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with a scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for their guarantee of well-being granted them by the, by the world government. This is what the battle is all about. The battle should not be between black and white, but between right and wrong. And I believe that reasonable, rational minds should work this out. We have a common enemy. Yeah, and my enemy happens to be white. Unbelievable? Yeah. No, I'm not an enemy to myself. George Orwell said, political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable and to give an appearance of solidarity to pure women. And Euclid are talking to the women. Having a belief in God has nothing to do with race. Believing in God and following in the footsteps of the faith has nothing to do with race or color. Khalid Muhammad does not cater to the very best in you, but rather panders to the very worst in you. And you, sir, are not leading. You are not leading the people out of the desert into the promised land, but out of the promised land into the desert to die. I think Khalid deserves a front row seat on the Jerry Springer show. You're exploiting and not benefiting your people. And I think he's become an embarrassment to the nation of Islam, and I think that's why Minister Farrakhan has made that separation. But in my remaining time, I want to reiterate what is happening in America. We have the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, both controlled by members of the Council on Foreign Relations. In 1980, we had an election. George Bush, from the Trilateral Commission, was running for president. John Anderson, from the Trilateral Commission, was running for president. Jimmy Carter, from the Trilateral Commission, was running for president. In 1980, it was a heads they win, tails we lose. Even if the coin landed on its side, we would lose. Until we incite a revelation, until we have money in this country that is not controlled by these international banksters and government gangsters, we are going to be forever enslaved to this institution, this evilarchy that I talked about. I did not go to Yale. I was not financed to go to Harvard. And I have no allegiance for them. But I know that individuals from the Ford Foundation are interested in reducing the population of the planet. This is not a question, it's a reality. And when we take a look at the New World Order emerging, and we take a look at how they work over the races, like what color is black. My children are half white, they're half black. Are they then half devils? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're half devils because they're, they're mixed? That's not only absurd, it's insane. My children are of the white race or the black race. They are the, of the human race with the God-given right to discriminate or be discriminated against. And some of you here are part white. Are you part devil? I'm asking a question. Are you part devil? Yes, you're part devil. Oh, I see. If we, if we bought into this ridiculous, racist, rabble-rousing rhetoric. 
No, I think it's insane. And insofar as the ID is planned, insofar as all of the identification programs are, are planned, this isn't a figment of my imagination, it is a reality. And you will see the collapse of the stock market and you will be seeing people in the streets hunting for a meal, something to eat. And what I'm suggesting that you do, I am, if you'd be kind enough and respectful enough to listen, you came to pay $10 here to, to hear both of us in a debate. And I'm, I'm quite capable of, of debating Khalid. And that's what I intend to debate with. So, insofar as this is concerned, this problem, I offer solutions. Khalid offers rhetoric. What I am suggesting is that each and every one of you take as much of your money as you can and get gold and silver coin. I'm suggesting that you have survival equipment. I'm suggesting that you, got, that you buy gold and silver and lead. I'm suggesting that you buy food and that you are prepared for the worst because the worst is yet to come. Now, if you have, if you have done any study at all, you will understand that what I am saying is true. I speak from my heart. You say, well, Khalid says, uh, this brother out of uh, the East Coast, and I'm trying to think of his name. Well, anyhow, that he came up with all of this information. I think he, and he's talking about the uh, boule. What I am saying is that he is correct. The boule is a problem and the blue boule is black. And I'm taking a look at, um, here's one of my tapes here with Jordan Maxwell. It's called Lucifer 2000. He said yes, uh, and he's talking about a fellow who, we're, we're talking about a fellow named General Albert Pike, 33rd degree Mason, Sovereign Grand Commander of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of the Freemasonry in the United States of America. He said, yes, Lucifer is God. And he went on to say the Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. If you go over here to Wilshire Boulevard in Plymouth and look up, you're going to see a statue about as tall as this building of General Albert Pike co-founder of the Ku Klux Klan. The Masonic religion is demonic. And I believe if there's going to be a separation of church and state, there has to be a separation between the Masonic religion and the government of the United States of America. Are they white? Well, some of them happen to be black in the, in the Prince Hall lodges. And I think it's crazy for a black man to be in the Prince Hall Lodges. One fellow watched our Millennium Tape and he watched it over and over and over. And he came, this is a black guy. And when he watched that tape, for about the fourth time he gave me a call. He says, listen, I'm going to send in my resignation. I've got to go out in front of these fellows and say, I am no longer. I am no longer part and parcel of the Prince Hall Lodges of the Masonic Order. And if you take a look at the lawyers and liars in this government, you'll find out that most of them are in the Masonic Order. And they in some way connected. And yes, there is a satanic order above the banksters. And yes, they do lie nude in a coffin. And they are born again into a satanic order at the Skull and Bones, the Brotherhood of Death at Yale. And what I'm saying about Khalid is that he is being used by the Council on Foreign Relations to bring about a revolution rather than a revelation. And I would like to see and I would support a separatist movement if, if uh, the Nation of Islam would like to have its own nation. I would honor it. I would support it. 
And when he says, no, I would not, you better think again. When I take a look at individuals like Colin Powell, in fact, I think Colin Powell is probably a better name for this man. He is working hand in hand with the Illuminists, with the Henry Kissingers, with the members of the Council on Foreign Relations and the CIA. And this volunteerism, I say, ask not, ask not what you can do for your country, but I say, ask what your government can do for you, because you, you should be the master and the government should be the servant. And that statement that was made, the statement that was made by John F. Kennedy was not his own. It was the words of Adolf Hitler. And if I'm not hearing Hitler tonight, then maybe I'm just not hearing. But I think the man sits be, stands, or sits beside me here is well deserving of the title. America's Black Hitler. Thank you. At this time, Dr. Muhammad will have 15 minutes for closing statements. I want to first of all point out that in a study in the Journal of Black Psychology dealing with religiousness, race, and psychological well-being, exploring social psychological mediators, that they have determined that black people are more connected to God and more spiritual and more religious as the psychologists and psychiatrists have studied and white people have a natural leaning or inclination, I might add, toward that which is Luciferian, devil, and satanic. Look, brothers and sisters, look at their constant preoccupation with their little league teams with their elementary school teams, their junior high school teams, their high school teams, and some of their national adult teams. Look at their preoccupation with the name devil. They're red devils, they're blue devils, they're the devils. They name themselves and they name their teams after all of these names. He says, we will see the collapse of the stock market. What in the hell do I care? We want to see the stock market crash. The only way we can realize our rise is to witness their demise. They must fall in order for us to rise. Won't you be out there trying to hold up America and get in the way of God's wrath? And God can't hardly get to the devil for you being in the way. You better get the hell out of the way. He says that we must buy gold, we must buy silver, we must store medical supplies, we must store water, we must do this. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us all of these things a long time ago in teaching us about the fall of America, and there are many of us still doing it all over the hells of North America to this day. But the cracker believes he has to come and tell us what we need to do. No good wig wan bastard. He pumped out. He wouldn't deal with Osi Osar or Osiris. He only mentioned the pyramid and the eye over the pyramid on the back of the dollar, which is not the eye of Heru. It's not the Egypt. It is not the symbol of the pharmacy. It is not the symbol that comes up out of our ancient forefathers and foremothers when you study our history and our history. This is a cracker's eye on the back of the dollar over the pyramid dealing with exactly what we're talking about, turning our supreme wisdom directly from God upside down and turning it around and turning it against us. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I repeat, I have proven to you from the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He keeps mentioning my spiritual father, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. He was the one that told me that you were the devil. 
he was the one that taught me who the devil was. He was the one that I learned to say so eloquently and loquaciously and dynamically and articulately. Cracker Trump. I learned it from him. I'm a product of Louis Farrakhan. I'm the son of Farrakhan. And I believed that you were the devil when they taught me then, and I still believe that you're the devil today. And I don't believe that Minister Farrakhan nor anyone should go beyond the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I think you are just trying to put that on him so that you can fit yourself into some kind of special arrangement here tonight that would make this an evening where you can exercise the lies that you're used to getting away with telling everywhere you go but you didn't get away with them here tonight you won't pull that small time stuff over on us Khalid Muhammad wants a revolution you damn right I want a revolution I'm a revolutionary fool I believe black man and woman whatever you do you should be a revolutionary. If, you're a, if you are a teacher, be a revolutionary teacher. If you're a student, be a revolutionary student. If you're a grandmother, a grandfather, be a revolutionary grandmother, a grandfather. If you're a father, be a revolutionary father. If you're a mother, be a revolutionary mother. Fight this bastard. Teach your babies to be revolutionary babies. Even if they can't do nothing but fight this cracker with the baby bottle. Teach your babies to fight this bastard with the baby bottle. Be a revolutionary no matter what you do. Don't let this cracker come here and try to teach you how to be a revolutionary. Revolution means complete constructive change. This cracker don't want no complete constructive change. Revolution starts here and goes all the way around 360. The Bible puts it this way. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. In the beginning, you ruled black man and woman. In the beginning, it was your monetary system. In the beginning, it was your economic system. It was your system of government and jurisprudence. It was your academic system. It was your social order, but now a cracker wants you to accept one group of crackers over another group of crackers, and you never get back to your original godlike self. No good, black man. No good, black woman. I'm a revolutionary. If you are a rapper, be a revolutionary rapper. Rap revolutionary rap and liberation lyrics. If you write movies, be a revolutionary movie maker. Make movies that move and motivate the movement. Make some movies where we kill white folks in the movie so that we can understand our possibility. The cracker will give you money if you are shooting your brother in the head with your gap, with your block. If you blowing your brother's brains out and blowing it all over the wall, boys in the hood, huh? Yeah. Menace to society. Right. And if you question him about making movies, killing black people, black on black, he says, after all, it's just a movie. Let's make some movies where we kill white folks. Be a revolutionary actor, a revolutionary musician, a revolutionary artist. I love Sankofa. How many love Sankofa? But there's one thing about Sankofa I did not like. We saw them abuse us and misuse us throughout the movie of Sankofa. We saw the cracker rape our sister on the screen every time brutally rape her. But at the end, when it was time called payback time, we see sister standing with a blade in her hand as the cracker comes riding down through the field. And sister has to, we have to use our imagination that she killed him off the camera. I don't want no movie like that. Be a revolutionary movie maker. I want to see sister after this cracker has misused her a whole movie. I want to see sister take her blade and swish, cut 
that cracker's damn head off. I want to see his head roll down the field on the movie. I want to go to the cinema, go over to Magic Johnson Cinema. I want to go in and sit down in them plush seats at Magic's Theater. I want to see a revolutionary movie maker put a movie on the screen where we kill crackers so hard and so long until blood is all over the screen. You got to cover your damn popcorn. You think blood is going to get in the popcorn. After all, after all, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad not only taught us of revolution, meaning complete constructive change, or he used the term resurrection. Resurrection. But he also, Anthony, taught us of revelation. He said that God revealed to him that God revealed to him in the person, that God revealed to him that the time for the rule of the white man is up, that he was given six days or 6,000 years as it is in the Bible, six days shall thy rule, O man, and do all thy work, but on the seventh day you will be put to rest. Second Peter 3 and 8 says, Dearly beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day with the Lord equals a thousand years, and a thousand years equals one day. So 6,000 years the cracker was given to rule. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, God in revelation revealed to him that God in the person revealed to him that separation was the best and only solution, that we have to get away from this death, that we would be all right, Anthony, if we could just get the hell away from you, we would be all right. The only reason we let you in here tonight is to show your skinny, ironing board backside, straight up, straight down, six o'clock, flat behind, up. That's the only reason we let you in here tonight. That's the only reason. Says I'm a discredit. How many of you believe I'm a discredit to the nation of Islam? How many believe I'm a credit to the nation of Islam and the black nation? Let me see your hand. How many of you don't know what the hell you believe? That's all right. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it's freedom time. No more we shall overcome. The song now is we shall overrun. We should support whatever the enemy opposes and oppose whatever the enemy supports. Support whatever the enemy opposes and oppose whatever the enemy supports. But when you get a cracker like this, they play on both sides. Oh yeah. Cracker quick to do that on you now. Cracker over here, be on that side, then you have another cracker on this side. He said, if you miss him over there, Charlie, I'll get him over here, buddy. If you can't get them to follow you over there, girl, I'll get them to follow me over here. And I'll tell them all the good things. The cracker said some truth. The devil can do good. But that doesn't make the devil good. The real enemy is the white man. Let us unite. Yes, let us make an alliance. Yes, let us build an African united front and a black united front. Yes, let us store our water and our medical supplies and our food. Let us begin to train and teach each other. Each one teach one. Yes, let us get our gold and our silver, which is what this system used to be based on. Now they just hang in paper. Yeah. Ain't backed by nothing from Fort Knox or nowhere else. And the Federal Reserve is owned privately by these cold-blooded crackers. But a cracker is a cracker is a cracker is a cracker. You can never trust a cracker. You can never trust a pepperwood. You can never trust the devil. No way on earth you can trust this devil sitting right here. If he comes with good information, take the devil's good information and bid the devil get thee behind me, Satan, and send him on his way. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Lift every voice and sing, but at the same time, you better lift every fist and swing, too. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.
Brothers and sisters, we need you to take your seats. Brothers and sisters, we need you to take your seats. The program is not over. The program is not over. Brothers and sisters, please hold your seats for a little while. I mean, if it was a party, if it was all night, it would be all right. If it's all day, it's okay. Brothers and sisters, now one of the more interesting aspects to this debate will be next. That is question and answers. Originally scheduled, we were going to have you write your questions on cards. We are now going to allow you to come to the microphone. We also have a special message from the pastor of this church who wants to come forward and talk to us. And also I have Brother Kareem that is going to assist us with our donations. Is Pastor Gathers here? Reverend Gathers. Is he here? Is Reverend Gaither here? Brother Kareem is going to come forward and assist us with, uh, with our donation. Brothers and sisters, as we get ready for our questions, we are waiting to hear from, we are waiting to hear from our pastor who has opened his doors, and from what I hear, he has always opened his doors to the black community. Um, what's your name, brother? Huh? Emania. Brother Emania, Stan. This is one of the great, great artists in the black community from the old tradition of our ancestors, <laughs> imbued by the spirit of our ancestors. And uh, what's the name of the brother with the uh, Temple of Ptah? What's his name? Brother Proctor. R Brother Prentice, that's right. Brother Prentice right there in the Baldwin Hill Shopping Mall. Brothers and sisters, all of you must go. It's called the Temple of the Valley of the Kings, the Temple of Ptah. Is that right? Come up so they can see you, brother. Here's our pastor who has come up, Pastor Gaither. But come right on up. You and the brother. Come right on up, brother. We do that in a few minutes. The pastor's here. Let's not hold the pastor. Brothers and sisters, put your hands together and let us give thanks to God and the ancestors for Pastor or rather Reverend Caper. Good evening. Good evening. I just have a few requests as the evening winds down. I'd like my people to know that this is still their place in the morning. So please take everything that belongs to you. As you leave, my staff will be here way past one o'clock trying to clean up the church before the morning will rise. So please, please take that which is yours. I want you to know that I enjoy opening my building for these kind of events, but we can only, I can only do this if you respect the building. Please respect the building while you're here. I don't mind taking the heat, but do your part. So it makes it easier for me to make my stand when I make my stand. So please re be uh, responsible in that order. And I thank you for your presence tonight. It's been a wonderful time, and I thank the speakers for the time that they've spent. But more importantly, I thank us all for gathering for the hours that we gather to raise our consciousness just another level. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, those of you that are interested in a copy of today's debate, in the kitchen next door, they are high speed duplicating it, 10 copies at a time. Before you leave, I would suggest that you get one. This is a debate for all times. We also have vendors in the back to your direct back that have uh, many supporting materials for tonight's debate. Uh, Brother is going to help us with our donations. Brothers and sisters, we want to uh, offset as many of the expenses. As you know, we ran it on radio all week. Uh, the brothers flew me in, and my son, where is he? My son, Farrakhan, give him a strong black hand. Many of you, many of you have watched him grow up right before your eyes. Very strong young man, very brilliant young man, very conscious and committed, and I just love him, love him, love him. <laughs> So, and to fly in security and staff, this is Brother Al Kareem Muhammad. He is one of the strong student leaders that invited me to King College November 29th, 1993. Let's give him a strong black hand. 
And so with the rental of the church and all of the airline tickets and the radio and the promos and, and uh, I guess, love offerings and honorariums, what we're asking you to do is to help, uh, help us to defray uh, some of that expense and or all of it if we can and to do all that we wanted to do in the grandest manner. Is there anyone here that, do we have any baskets, any buckets? Well, it's got to be in the audience. Where's the other one? Hold them up, please, stand. Need somebody on this side. And we have someone on closed circuit. Where is it? In the, in the adjacent room. We filled up this room, this one, and the adjacent room. Is there anybody here who will write a good check or give $100? There's someone in the back. Get his name quickly and get the $100. Brothers, you got to be looking with the basket. There's a man in the back trying to give you some money. Is there anybody here who will join brother in the back? And we need some more hundreds. Fifties, there's one right there. You gotta be looking, those with the baskets. You all right, devil? He said, oh yeah. <laughs> See, you catch the devil off guard, he tell a little truth. <laughs> brother Jeffrey, $100. Give brother Jeffrey a hand. Come on, brothers and sisters, give him a hand. We need some more hundreds, we need some more fifties. Show the devil that we support our programs. Any more hundreds out there? Good checks, here's a 50, a hundred, a good check. Gotta watch, raise your hand up, brother. <laughs> Any more fifties or hundreds out there? Where's his what? That's his queen, look how beautiful this queen is. Give her a strong black hand, brothers and sisters. This is a beautiful queen. Beautiful sister. Devil, how did you get that sister? You got one of our best sisters, you no good bastard. <laughs> What'd you say, sister? Yes, ma'am. Definitely. That the, a goddess is with a devil. <laughs> Instead of a god, a real black man. You see him wink, that's one of the characteristics of the devil. I knew I would get it before tonight. He wink. We need some more donations. Are there any 50s, 100s? What about 20s and 25s? Anybody that will give $25? Let's wipe out all the airline tickets right now. Any 20s or 25s in the audience? Hold your hands up right now. Any 10s in the audience? 10s, 20s, 50s, let's pass, where are the silver uh, buckets? Bring them up front, just pass them, get whatever, no, just let them go, brother, on the front row. You have to start on the front row. Start on the front row, bring it to the front row. Somebody on this side. All right, brother, what's your name, sir? Brother Kid. Brother Kid, $20, give him a strong black hand. Put all your 20s in now, brothers and sisters. 50s, 100s, good checks. Fill up all of the buckets. While you're doing that, let's start with the questions. I have to turn it over to whoever's going to conduct the question and answer period. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Okay, our brother wants to make a presentation about Valley of the Kings. Uh, this is a uh, Malik, brother Malik, uh, that helped sponsor this and put this on. Uh, he's the one that purchased this, and I want to give him first the credit. He purchased this from me. I am an artist that has been supported by my black people for 26 years. Uh, I haven't paid uh, tax or income tax for 28 years. I haven't punched a clock in 27 years. And I have been self-supported by my black people. So I'm a living testimony that we can uh, support ourselves. I've been supported by my people and I want to thank my people. This is a pre special presentation that he hasn't seen of Brother Muhammad. But he made some statements, and I want to let you know his son, to me, is a warrior, and it makes my, I want my son to be like him. He stood the whole time at attention and listened and absorbed everything his father was saying. That's right. That's if we have children that has been reared up like this son, with the information, like if I was a kid with this information growing up like him, we wouldn't have no problems That's today. Right. That's right. This is what I would like to read. This is what I like to read. There is no end to it. As liveth Osiris, and as liveth my soul, 
so liveth my son, the light of my world. For the youth shall lead the way. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in these last days. The youth needs to be programmed properly. Yes, sir. Something about me. Let me say something real quick. I don't want to take up too much time. But this brother right here, he's very, very modest. But to really see his work, see the M Hotep in him, you need to come by the Valley of the King. That's right. And really see it. And we do need your support. And Brother Khalib here, and I can testimony to that. He has brought the ancestors to the Valley of the Kings. But come, feel the energy. Believe me, when you come in, you won't be the same when you leave. No, sir. Give Brother Prentice a black hand, brothers and sisters. Again, if you need a copy of today's debate, they are being high-speed duplicated next door at the kitchen. I'm not sure the price sister. If you can go next door, they will be able to help you. Also patronize our vendors in the back. Now. We have question and answers. And I want to implore upon all of our brothers and sisters in line to ask a specific question of either one of our presenters today. Sister Audie, $100. Give her a black hand. Brother, you are first. You're going to defer to our queen? Yes, sir. Queen, may I approach? you are first. If you can say that into the microphone. May I approach as this happens in front of the brother? Sure, sister. Thank you. I just wanted to bring you a token of my love and appreciation. And Farrakhan, you're just growing so beautiful. I love you, too. Thank you. If you're here May the, May the 12th, please come to court with us to see Patricia Moore go down. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Give her a black hand. <laughs> to see what, sister? Patricia Moore. Patricia Moore. The traitor. The traitor. Former counsel. Patricia Moore. Okay, brother. You have the... <laughs> Again, please ask a specific question. Uh, can we have someone that can turn on the floor mic? We need the floor mic on. Testing, testing. Please. Okay, can you brother. hear me? Brother, you have the first question of the night. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my name is uh, Marcus, and uh, I'm acquainted with uh, Mr. Hilder. My question is directed at uh, Mr. Anthony Hilder. Uh, when I met you for the first time, uh, you showed me a, a picture of give, your... Give him a chance here and be quiet so Marcus can speak, please. You showed me a, a picture of yourself uh, in uh, either South Africa or Zimbabwe, which was known as uh, Rhodesia at the time. And you were kneeling over the dead bodies of either eight to 12 uh, black soldiers, and you had a big grin on your face. No, I, didn't I would like for you to explain uh, to this audience, as some of your fellow white researchers have told me that you have murdered black people before in Africa, I'd like you to explain to this audience what were you doing in South Africa, who were you working for, and what was the reason why you were standing over those dead brothers? Okay, um, he's asking the question about my trip uh, to Rhodesia. And this was uh, during a, a time of war I was acting as a journalist. Um, I was brought out to uh, Rusapi, and at that particular time there was uh, uh, 20 individuals who had been uh, killed, and I believe they were killed by Fantan. Fantan would be the equivalent of napalm. Uh, as a journalist, I was uh, squatting down. I had uh, my picture taken at that particular time. These fellows had some AK-47s. I was stating that it was a communist revolution, and that uh, I was not in support, obviously, of that. Uh, the people of Rhodesia supported and elected and wanted Bishop Abel Musarewa. 
they did not uh, they were not allowed to to, uh, to have that selection but rather there was a forced election and it was not by by ballot but rather but by bullet and I wasn't uh, smiling I was uh, uh, wincing a little bit because of the stench of the bodies in the south in the uh, southern African sun. I hope that answers your question. What? Uh, did, did you ever participate in the murder of any uh, no. black people over no, in no, uh, South all. Africa? Because according to some of your other white researchers, you did. No, I was not involved in that. I was engaged in a word war, and I went to Southern Africa. And by the way, I was uh, when I got off the plane. Um, and this was in, uh, in Johannesburg. I was arrested by the South African police and held in Johannesburg. I am still persona non grata in South Africa because I was going to Africa to put up a plan for a United States of Africa which would recognize the tribal, linguistic, and racial nation states. And we so, want you to please limit your question to just one. Just one question, please. Okay. Just one, one question. Okay. <laughs> okay. It says, um, um, Anthony. Every time you talk, of, Anthony. Every time you talk about the new world order, why is it that they only out to destroy the black people? What's so about us that they have to? Well, that they have to get rid of. Adolf Hitler wrote the book, The New World Order. This is not something that was introduced by George Bush. Um, when I talk about they, uh, they considered black people to be inferior uh, and, and expendable, let's put it that way. So it's, it's not just simply the extermination or elimination or culling of the black race. They want to reduce the world's population by about 80% eventually. So if we're talking about uh, five and a half billion or, you know, people here, uh, we're then talking about reducing the population by essentially four billion people. So it's not just the blacks that they want to reduce. It is uh, whites and blacks or anybody who is in, uh, in opposition to them. Okay. And we're talking about a, a Cassius cartel. The Cassius cartel is basically white and uh, there's a few people in the boule who go along with, with the program, so it's not all done by whites, but mostly. Before the next question, there's a Ford license number 3T VF389. You're blocking someone in the handicapped parking space. Would you please move your vehicle? That is a Ford 3T VF389. Please move your car immediately. Next question. Uh, Anthony, you said that the Masons, the Skull and Bones, and the Illuminati are all worship the devil. Um, Brother Khalid suggests that you deal with them like John Brown. I, I would like to ask you, how would you deal with these people who you say uh, worship the devil? Well, for freedom to live, they must die. I'll just put it as simple as that. Uh, they must die politically, physically, financially. We should, not, we should not in any way support any of their businesses. We should have nothing to do with them. Yes, ma'am. Before the next question, as a BMW 3TND782 that's blocking the car that I just read off the license number. A BMW 3TND782, please move your vehicle. Question? Assalamu alaikum, my brother Khalid Muhammad. Would you please comment on Geronimo Pratt, longest held political prisoner in the Our stand is with all black political prisoners and prisoners of war, Brother Sundiata Okoli, Brother Sekou Odinga, Brother Matula Shakur, and of course Sister Asada Shakur who is in exile in Cuba. Uh, Brother Frankie Zulu Moore, Brother uh, Malik Muhammad, who was my captain here in this city, and other political prisoners who are being held, uh, members of the Africa family or the MOVE movement, 
And it was this month, May the 2nd, May the 2nd, this month, I believe 1973. Let me make sure. No, it was May 2nd, 1973, that Sister Asada Shakur, Brother Zaid Shakur, and Brother um, um, Seiko, not Seiko Odinga, uh, Brother Sundiata Okoli, in the shootout on the New Jersey Turnpike with the state troopers there where Brother Zaid was killed, Sister Sada was wounded, and then later locked up. But it was in November of 1979 that the Black Liberation Army freed Sister Sada Shakur. So we know that after the Black Liberation Army in November of 79 freed Sister Sada Shakur, we know that Rochelle McGee, we know that other political prisoners, Brother Geronimo and others, if we cannot get them out, and in truth and reality, we will not be able to get all of them out through the court system. We have to become strong enough that we go and liberate our political prisoners. That is the only way that they're going to really get out, most of them. I have one question uh, for Khalid. Are you accusing Louis Farrakhan of dealing with the devil when he deals with my friends Dr. Robert Strecker, Dr. Lynn Horowitz, Ralph Epperson, and William Cooper? Now that's the kind of question that only a devil would ask. You see, we see the devil coming before the devil even gets here. What the devil is doing is realizing that he's no match for me. So he wants to put me in a situation where I would be openly at odds with my spiritual father. Are you accusing Minister Farrakhan? No. Bastard, I'm not accusing, accusing Minister Farrakhan of nothing. And I'm not accusing you of anything. I know that you're the devil. And now every time you open your damn mouth, you prove that you are the devil here tonight. Want to create a problem, further exacerbate the tension between my spiritual father and I. Whatever is between my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and me, is between Minister Farrakhan and me. No devil has anything to do with that. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that I was offended when you gave credit. You know, you did this a few times tonight. That um, there, are certain, a little and there are certain artifacts that come from our history and culture that you give credit to belonging to the Illuminati and the Masons. You did that with the Luxor and you did that with a few other things. So I want to point out, I am offended because that's our history and culture. They took it from us. It started with us. The other, the question I have though is, um, I was well, I am not they, first of all. Let's, let's straighten that out. That's your opinion. Okay, but, but anyway, my question is, that you know the topic tonight was is the white man the devil and and it seems to me that everything that you've said so far confirms that yeah. and so i was wondering where is your proof that the white man is not the devil that's what i wanted to know well. it is not only absurd it's absolute insanity to even make the suggestion that any man or any woman is the devil because of, or they are evil, because of their color. That is not only absurd, it is insane. My question was, okay, only where, one question, man. It's the same question. He didn't answer it. Okay. Where Maybe. is your proof that the white man is not the devil? The proof. Because, see, unless you can back it up, it's just rhetoric. And so I wanted to well, know, you know, could you... I've heard, I've heard a great deal of rhetoric tonight. Very little proof of, of anything, uh, but the, the rhetoric has not been coming from me, but from Khalid Muhammad. Next question. I didn't answer the question. My name is Gary Williams. I'm the producer and host of uh, the TV program Contemporary Christian Theology. My question is directed at Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Uh, it's uh, because of your theological training. Jesus spoke about the devil, uh, seeing a devil fall to the earth. Uh, now, is this, uh, do you think this might be seen as an allegory, metaphor, and uh, how does that apply to our topic today, is uh, the white man a devil? 
The scripture, very good question, my brother. The scripture says, O Lucifer, right. son of the morning, how art thou fallen from heaven? My spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, has taught us and taught us well, as he was taught by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Lucifer. It means light bearer. One who comes appearing to be an angel of light and a bearer of truth but who is actually one of the princes and rulers of darkness. Yes, they fall from heaven, meaning that their lie is not able to stand. Their period of rule and dominance and global supremacy is not able to stand. But it also goes back some 6,600 years in the grafting birth control and genetic engineering process that is responsible for the grafting of the white race out of the original black man and black woman. You see, it is important to understand, he asked the question earlier, that if he has children and they, it has a black mother, they have a black mother and him for a father, would that make them half devil? Well, according to genetic law, black is dominant and white is recessive. You can get the recessive from the dominant, but you cannot get the dominant from the recessive. And if a black parent and a white parent have a baby, that baby is biologically and genetically black and catches hell in the white man's world just like they're black and would have to carry a sign to convince anybody that they had a no good trifling ugly white daddy at home looking like Anthony Hill. Now, Lucifer, the son of the morning, again, this has to do with the grafting of the white race out of the original black man and woman, but it also, in an esoteric sense and in a scriptural, scriptural metaphoric sense, has to do with the fall of the white man's world and the fall of the white man from a high exalted place of rulership that Ephesians was talking about when it talks about principalities and the rulers of darkness and how they would be in high places. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou fallen from heaven, coming bearing some relatively good information coming as a distributor and, and, and a bearer of light, but actually, you've asked a wonderful question, actually one who is one of the rulers of darkness.